Hello, and welcome back to another episode of... Christine hasn't really tried this technique before, but we're going to give it a go anyway. This time, I wanted to make myself a pair of 18th century style tie-on pockets, so that I can always take my pockets with me, no matter what I'm wearing. Since this is a smallish project, I wanted to see if I could make patchwork pockets from offcuts and scraps left over from larger projects. We used wool scraps for the previous scrap busting cat toy, so this time I sorted out all my linen scraps. So when I first started this project, I pretty much thought I would have to patchwork the whole thing, but I mean, some of these pieces are pretty big. Look at, look at this one. It pretty much looks like a pocket already and there's two of them. So I can just use this as the back of the pocket and have that already all sorted out. Um, and then there's this one, which I don't know why this is in my scrap heap, but it is clearly too big to be here, so shoo. And for the rest, I have made this cute little hexagon template that I'm gonna use to cut out all my pieces. Commence much marking and cutting of things. Yes, it would have been more scrap efficient to sew the pieces together asymmetrically without cutting them up into even smaller pieces first. But I really wanted to give Patchwork a go and I do have plans for more scrap busting projects in future for which we will need a considerable amount of tiny bits and pieces. My two different types of linen were then laid out into a pattern. I could hardly believe my luck here, as the very first layout that I tried worked better than I could have anticipated, and I could just proceed straight to stitching. I opted to hand sew everything because the pieces are so small. I think it would have been fiddly and frustrating to try to keep even seam allowances all around on the machine. My planning boils down to always trying to sew as many seams as I can in a continuous line before I have to move the needle, so I do not fasten and cut the thread for every seam. Understandably, this took a time. done. We now commence uh, attempts at pressing this monstrosity that refuses to behave. Before giving up and just tucking down each seam allowance, pressing the seams open as we go because linen is cooperative like that. So we have laid down all our seams and tacked them in place gently. Um, I'm sort of feel, feeling this, I was working on it, and I sort of think it's a little bit thin, and a little bit um, like I wanted it to be have a little more body. Uh, I realize that's my own fault for using linen that is as, as thin as this, but I have the solution. This piece of scrap linen that we discarded earlier for being too big to implement into our patchwork I think is gonna work perfect as a lining. And I guess that will kind of negate the whole point of the patchwork, but I would rather have something that is functional and useful and that I won't be afraid of using um, than anything else. So let's cut out our pieces and continue with 
I start with my backing pieces, since they are the shape we want already. And then we pin the whole thing onto the lining. I want to sort of pad stitch the patchwork and lining layer together to make sure they don't slide around. And before I do that, I'm going to do a quick running stitch all around the edge. I want the pad stitches to double as decoration, however, so I'm digging out my box of embroidery floss that I was generously gifted. Let's go green this time. I thought feather stitches all around some of the hexagons would give a sort of foresty, climbing, viney feeling. Bonus points because feather stitches keep most of the colorful embroidery floss on the visible side. When that's all done, it's time to cut the opening so we can actually get our hand into our precious pocket. The edges are bound with this wide cotton tape in my stash. And secured with tiny hemming stitches both front and back. Our front piece finally done, we can now go ahead and pin it onto our back piece so we can secure them together with a strong backstitch. Any excess seam allowance is trimmed off and these edges too are bound with twill tape. Last but not least, the length of tape that can be tied about the waist is cut and pins inserted on the side of each hip to mark where the pockets will sit before they are, you guessed it, bound to the top edge of our pockets. And with that, our pockets are complete. Personally, what I really like about the decorative stitches, like feather stitches, is that they can be dressed up or left plain depending on your preference. On one of the pockets, I experimented with adding tiny red berries, yellow flowers, darker leaves, and my own personal favorite, leaves and tiny clusters of flowers or you can just leave them plain. But this is the kind of embroidery that I really like to do. You start out small and just add one additional layer at a time. It also means that this piece is functionally done, even if I choose to add more fluff to it later. Which one is your favorite? The plain feather stitch side or the embroidered side?